Hey, Boaz here with Next Pittsburgh. As you can tell, I am suited up for a very special Yinzer backstage pass. This is the Riazi substation, and we're going to learn today how Duquesne Light gets power all across Pittsburgh. But first, I've got to put on this very special face mask. They said it's special. They said I couldn't bring a normal one. And we're going to enter the substation. Hey, Bill. Okay, so we're coming inside the substation with Michelle Antantis. You're a senior consulting engineer. Did I get that right? That's right. We can walk down this direction where we have some of our transmission equipment. Now, like immediately, I guess for some reason I was expecting would come in here and it would be super loud or something. Actually, most of the equipment is fairly quiet. Yeah. Uh, outside, we have some transformers. They tend to make a little bit of noise, but other than that, most of the equipment is you know, pretty low noise level. I guess when you're generating electricity, that part is loud, but this part you're, is just like sitting here. Exactly. The current's flowing through it, but whenever the current flows through it, there's really no noise associated with any of that equipment. So I don't even know what we're looking at, but they're these massive pipes. So this equipment is what we refer to as gas insulated substation or GIS. Uh, so the, each tube has a conductor inside of it and it's insulated with a uh, gas. How much electricity is passing through here? Well, that's a great question. Uh, you know, this equipment can handle thousands of amps, but probably on a normal day-to-day -day circumstance, it wouldn't have, it would have probably have a few hundred amps that's, you know, might be flowing through it. So, but uh, like over here, if you look, with electricity and power, we have what we refer to as three phases. You know, so there's an A phase, a B phase, and a C phase. But all three of those uh, tubes that you see there, that makes up a, uh, a circuit breaker. So if you think about it in your house, you have a panel box with a breaker. Right. Same idea, just a little bit bigger. <laughs> you see the tubes that come up and they go over that direction. They're actually going outside the building to where we have transformers. So like right now, all of this equipment is for 138,000 volts, but the transformers outside step that down to 23,000 volts. So if you see a wood pole line running down your street, those lines are usually 23,000 volts. And then we step it down to the, you know, 120 that feeds your house, so. And so how many of these substations are in the Pittsburgh area? Uh, yeah, we have over 600 of these substations across our service territory. Is it, yeah, every neighborhood like served by a different substation? Like is this serving like the Oakland area? Yeah, no, we do have another substation in the Oakland area that serves a portion of it. And then this is serving a, another portion of the Oakland area. So, but yeah, we, I mean, everything is tied together. You know, we try to have a lot of uh, resiliency with our design. So the way that this was designed was that, you know, if you lose a line because of some incident or, uh, you know, some malfunction or something like that, the other line can carry all the load and still feed this neighborhood. I see. So you want a few substations around that way, right? If there's a power outage, you can be pulling power from exactly. somewhere else. So they can tie each other together and support each other. And where is this power generated that's coming here? Uh, that's a great question. <laughs> so that actually has been changing over the years. You know, in the past, uh, you know, there were coal-fired plants and uh, nuclear plants that fed into our service territory. But today there's a lot of solar, you know, that's uh, coming onto the grid. So it's interesting though watching it and seeing how, you know, how the grid is evolving with all of the new technologies. So it's a pretty exciting time to be a part of this. Yeah. How long have you worked here? I've been with Duquesne Light over 30 years. Oh, what was your first job when you started? I was actually designing transmission lines. So and then I went into substation design, which is, you know, uh, how, you know, basically how I got to this point. So, so did you design the substation? Well, I was in our planning group, so I helped come up with the concept of, you know, what's the most reliable arrangement for this equipment, and, uh, you know, and then we worked as a team to, to do the design work, and, you know, we had a consultant that helped us. So this, this substation is your baby. It is my baby. <laughs> it's been a great project to see it come to life. Okay, now we're coming outside with Richard Saparito, you're the advanced grid specialist, is that right? That is correct. I guess, can you just tell me what we're looking at over here? So come over here, these are the Transformers for the station. What they do is they love the movie, the Transformers. These are, it's different, I know. It's not really like Bumblebee or anything. Correct. <laughs> um, yeah, so these, the, the transmission lines come in. These transform the higher voltage down to a distribution voltage that we can then 
distribute um, throughout the community. And this is the newest substation, right? It's only like a year old? That is correct. The first tw uh, distribution circuit was cut in in July of 2021. Gosh, well, happy birthday, substation. And so what, like, why was this one built? Was there, like, what was going on? So in a planning role, uh, I do forecasting studies. So you look at electrical demands as they exist and 10 years out, how they'll be growing. In addition, you communicate with the customers. Specifically in this area, we're dealing with Carnegie Mellon, Pitt, UPMC, really large electrical Those demand. folks love using electricity. Yes, they do. Uh, some of our largest customers. So in analyzing all that, it became evident that within near future, we would be in a capacity deficit in the area. So to make sure that we're prepared for that, I started planning Riazi substation. That's wild. I guess just like electricity is everywhere. I never thought about that. But if like UPMC is building a huge new building, you're like, oh, okay, we've got to make sure we can bring electricity to like a thousand new people. Absolutely. It's much different. So when you think about a customer getting, a residential customer getting air conditioning or um, a new home going up, that impact on the system isn't as great as when UPMC puts in a new bed tower as they're doing right now. Wow. And then like you got to power a hundred MRI machines or whatever. Yeah. Their demands are very large. Gosh, that's wild. Were you always interested in this as a kid? You know what? I think I got interested in electronics when I saw Terminator as a child. So, oh, really? Yeah. So not that far off from Transformers, I guess. Uh, well, Transformers <laughs> is a terrible movie. Terminator is actually a decent movie. Yeah, no, it's true. I, I won't argue not with as you. It's the sequel, yeah. Terminator 2. But. What are those like big tanks up there? So that is called a conservator tank. And what it does is um, the transformer has mineral oil in it that helps to provide insulation. Like mineral oil like you'd like treat your cutting board at home with? Essentially something like that. Anyhow, but as the oil expands, it goes up into that conservator tank. And then as uh, the, you know, the temperature goes down or the load goes down, the oil contracts and it comes back down into the tank. And then there's a bladder in there that allows the, through that bladder to actually breeze to the outside as it expands and contracts. Gosh, like moving electricity is complicated. It's, I was going to say it's, you know, basic physics, though, with uh, how, you know, what heat does. Yeah. So uh, just that we, you know, we take all those ideas and apply them. So. so if you're at CMU and you turn a light on, you're probably getting power from here. You're absolutely getting power from here. So. <laughs> Very cool. Now we're here with Don Kuntz, the senior manager of, you're going to have to help me. Distribution operations. Distribution operations. And I guess you're responsible for a lot of things, but one of the things you're responsible for is sort of outages. Well, you're not responsible for them, but you have to take care of them after. That's right. My team's responsible for all the outages for uh, on the distribution system for Duquesne Light. And so I always wonder, you know, especially often, I feel like in the summer, there's a summer storm, your power goes out. Like, what do you do? So a lot of things can take out the power, right? It could be... Anything from a tree falling onto the line, uh, you know, a car hitting a pole. Uh, sometimes it's just, you know, really high winds and the wires may wrap together. So a lot of different things can cause the outage. But my team is, uh, is uh, on the North Shore, and they're basically just waiting for people to call in and, and respond to the trouble. So we uh, respond to everything through, through trouble tickets. Uh, you call in, give your name, phone number, you know, your address will pop up. And from there, we're just waiting for people to call with, with trouble reports. Basically, we can't see what happens out there. So we need the customers to call in to say, hey, here's what we see. We have a tree on the line here. Once we have that, we'll dispatch a troubleshooter out to the area and the troubleshooter will respond and call back to our, our distribution center and let them know what the trouble is. Is like a tree falling down and taking a line down, is that like the most common thing? Is that like 9 out of 10? I wouldn't say 9 out of 10, but it's one of the more common outages. You know, a lot of trees, people love their trees, so it's, it's, it's a common factor when we think of outages. But it's all just basically, if you think about it, like your house. You know, you have a breaker inside of your house. You know, the substations have breakers in it, so if something causes an outage, they'll trip. You know, we'll remove the, the, the faulty, uh, the piece causing the fault, and then just reset the breaker like you would anywhere else. Well, thanks for doing that because, you know, usually my power is not out for very long and I'm always happy when it comes back on. So thank you for that, Don. No problem. <laughs>